Hey, it's Aaron, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about pipelines, specifically the TMX or the Trans Mountain Pipeline right here in my hometown of Canada, USA. Now, obviously, pipelines are a major deal. They have been for a very long time, but this specific pipeline has been almost a blight or a cancer, some sort of disease on the Canadian people all the way since 2012. Now, this pipeline originally was told to the Canadian people that it was only going to cost, only going to cost, in and of somewhere around uh, $7 billion. Now, that's an outrageous amount of money, and obviously the Canadian people didn't have a real good time with that. Obviously, we have a bit of a problem here. We have this oil pipeline that is being forced through Canada that nobody really wants and that is already costing the Canadian taxpayers an outrageous amount of money. So what do they do? Well, the Canadian people decide, or at least a lot of protesters and the, those sorts of people decide that they're not going to take this kind of shit lying down and they're going to stop this pipeline from getting through. So the British Columbian government worked incredibly hard to make sure that this pipeline that was traveling from uh, Alberta all the way through British Columbia to the coast, that this pipeline wouldn't actually get through. And they worked really hard to make sure of that. And it stopped the progress on that pipeline to a large extent, so much so that the private business that was originally going to build the pipeline for that $7 billion, finally kind of just gave up and was like, you know what, if this project is going to continue to get stalled and stopped, uh, we're out. We're outie. We're not getting any uh, money out of this, so we're not going to be putting any more resources into this. Uh, until you figure your shit out, we're not going to involve ourselves. So, Justin Trudeau, the genius galaxy-brained person that he is, decided, you know what, hmm, I, I understand what you're saying, so instead of the private business taking control of this project and building this pipeline, we are going to, as the Canadian people, as the Canadian government, buy that project and build it ourselves. And then, get this, sell it back to a private industry so we can make profit somehow. It all sounds like an underpants gnome situation because we all realize that this pipeline isn't going to just cost seven billion dollars or eight billion dollars or nine billion dollars. In fact, it's been approved to cost something in around the price of 12 billion dollars with a possible return of something like $1.5 billion, which according to the resources that I've seen, or sources, sorry, that I've seen, that still somehow makes it commercially viable. How exactly that makes it commercially viable, I don't really understand, especially considering that right now we already have a pipeline that does all of that work. It's just not quite as big, but you know, Fuck it. We're going to just make another pipeline regardless because that's what the oil industry wants. And then once we do all of the hard work in building the damn thing, then we can just sell it to some fucking idiot that owns the oil company and uh, they can make all of the profit off of it, which is exactly what the liberal government wants to do. It's, it's a galaxy-brained idea to be sure. Now... Obviously, like I was saying at the start, there are a lot of problems with this plan and a ton of people are against it. Uh, specifically, one group known as, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to do the best that I can to pronounce it, the Wet Suetin um, native peoples that are uh, per currently protesting against them, uh, they have a massive, massive problem uh, with this pipeline because it's going directly through their land. Basically, the way this works is the Canadian government, working alongside uh, one of these private oil industries, just kind of decided that they were going to take all of the land in the path of this uh, pipeline and buy it all up, or 
take it however they want to do it, basically steal it away from those landowners and uh, use it for a public works project. Because when you have a national project that is this big, the Canadian government apparently doesn't give a shit about their, pro their own property laws uh, and can basically annex any property that they want. Now, I believe that they or originally wanted to go on a lot of good old fashioned white Canadian people's land, uh, but that was quickly vetoed when uh, they realized that the white Canadians weren't going to take that shit. Uh, so they quickly diverged this pipeline and put it primarily onto indigenous people's land. And that's a fucking problem because, well, the indigenous people don't want it there either. And like I was saying, this uh, group, the Wet Suetin, like I said, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, group wanted to stop this. Um, and right now... They're doing everything that they possibly can to do that. So over the last few days, state-backed militarized assault forces, commonly known as police or the RCMP here, which is very similar to state patrol, these militarized state-backed assault forces have come in and done massive raids of all of this indigenous people's territory, basically assaulting, abusing, and arresting these native people who are doing nothing more than protecting their own land against this occupation against colonization and believe me when I tell you that these state police these state-backed militarized assault forces which is what we should be calling them they are not fucking around they're coming in there with automatic weapons dogs and actual fucking body armor these people are literally looking for a war with this indigenous tribe and it's absolutely disgusting but thankfully, it's actually sparked all kinds of protests and demonstrations and solidarity with other native people groups all across the entire country. So they are building incredible barricades. They are uh, joining up with groups all across the entirety of Canada and getting together and blockading roadways, blockading um, railways and making sure that all of the infrastructure and all of the resources and so forth necessary to build that pipeline just ain't getting through, man. And it's so cool to see so many people working so hard to make sure that such a, an incredibly damaging project um, doesn't actually come to fruition, doesn't actually get through and actually uh, create more problems. So that's absolutely fantastic. But they're using kind of a bunch of different legal uh, legislations and so forth to get through uh, their message in kind of a legal way as well, not just with the blockades, but also through the court system, because that's something that you always kind of have to do. And the one thing that you have to think about whenever you're going through the court system is that when you're going up against the people that make the laws, the government, the state, the politicians, those sorts of people, you're in a fucking losing battle because you can't really fight against the person that made all of the rules for that fight. They're going to change around the rules and make it so that anything you do is going to be unlawful and everything they do is going to be holier than thou. So, obviously, the uh, native group is doing what they can and they're citing something known as the uh, UNDRIP or the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act. And they're doing whatever they can to make uh, that bit of legislation um, kind of binding and uh, trying to use that to veto any laws that come through that say that they are allowed the government, that is, uh, to just come through and annex the uh, native people's land and steal their property and build this damaging, destructive pipeline. But, like I said, they didn't make the laws. The Canadian government makes the laws. So they get to decide what they're going to do. And since they just kind of decided that that specific uh, rule doesn't really apply because it's not part of Canadian specific law. Uh, the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, which is um, basically like the state troopers here in Canada, uh, have decided, and along with the government and so forth, that the native people are acting unlawfully so they can go fuck themselves. And they're using all kinds of bureaucracy and uh, fuckery, for that matter, uh, to make sure that 
anything that the native people do is illegal in the eyes of the Canadian government. So any of these blockades, any stoppages of the work, anything that they're doing in protest of this pipeline is illegal. So they started doing mass arrests. Now, a lot of people, a lot of activists and so forth uh, have been arrested at this point, and uh, there is probably going to be more to come. So obviously, we stand uh, in solidarity with all of the protesters that are out there, that are getting active, that are trying to get involved and invested in making that difference and that change right now. Uh, and if I do get a chance, I'm going out um, for the next couple of days on uh, a, a bit of a, a drive. So if I do get a chance, if I come anywhere close to any of those areas and I can get in uh, and interview any of the uh, protesters, I absolutely will. Um, but with that being said, what do you guys think about this? So leave comments in the uh, comment section down below. Tell me what you think about this whole protest that's going on. Uh, tell me if... Uh, what your action would be, what you would do in this sort of situation. And uh, let's get that uh, conversation going. And that's really all I have to say today. So I am going to try to stay on top of this story as much as I possibly can. So if you do get a chance, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell button because they are definitely, definitely not going to tell you when I make another video. Um, and thanks for watching. Have a nice day.